Okay, so your ability to work with square roots and radicals in math is absolutely essential, especially like courses like algebra. But a lot of people are going to get a problem like this wrong because they just have not yet mastered all the properties and principles of working with square roots. But let's see how you do, and we're going to be doing this problem without the aid of a calculator. Let's go ahead and take a look at the problem. We have 3 times the square root of 20 plus 7 times the square root of 5. All this divided by the square root of 2 times the square root of 3. There is one and only one right answer. Okay, so just kind of keep that in mind and make sure that you fully complete your work because a lot of students will tend to be going in the right direction, but they'll kind of stop uh, prematurely without fully simplifying an expression like this. But let's see how well you do. And if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need assistance in learning mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so the only rule here is no calculators, so you don't want to have any kind of decimal answer. And let's go ahead and take a look at the correct full solution. It is the following. 13 times the square root of 30, all this divided by 6. Okay, now if you got this right, that is very good. Matter of fact, in my book, you're going to get a nice little happy face in A+, plus, a 100%, and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that indeed you are paying attention to your math teacher. And uh, that's always, obviously, always a good thing if you're trying to learn math. But the things that we're talking about here is typically taught in, let's say, like first year algebra. Okay, so you might be saying, well, I don't see any variables here. Well, again, the principles uh, dealing with radicals and square roots are taught, uh, again, generally speaking, in algebra. So if you don't remember how to do things like this, no big deal. I'm going to walk through uh, the solution step by step. And if you need to actually learn more about working with square roots and radicals, just remember in mathematics, this symbol here, that's a square root, but it's also referred to as a radical because you might say, well, this is the square root of 8. Indeed it is, but if I put a little 3 right here, that's the cube root of 8, and this symbol is referred to as a radical, and it's a very, very important part or subject or topic uh, in mathematics, especially algebra, again, because you need to learn how to uh, simplify radical expressions. And that's really what we're doing right here. This is what we call a radical expression. All these radicals and square roots are trying to express something, and what they're trying to express can be written in its uh, simplest form, which, of course, is the answer. But you also have other things you can do with square roots and radicals, like uh, solving radical equations, et cetera, et cetera. So anyways, big topic, and let's go ahead and get into the solution. And I'm just going to walk through it. There's a lot to cover here. And if you don't uh, understand some of the steps, of course, I'll be explaining uh, you know, the steps as we go. But if you don't understand something, I'm going to give you some suggestions on how you can kind of, you know, really learn this stuff if you want to learn it with me. Okay, so let's go ahead and focus in on the numerator here. And we have the th uh, 3 times the square root of 20 plus 7 times the square root of 5. Well, here's the thing. We would like to uh, add these two expressions, but we cannot add these expressions the way they are. Matter of fact, when you're dealing with square roots and radicals, you can only add things that have the exact same radical. So for example, if I had three radicals seven, and I want to add that to, uh, let me use a different number here, uh, five radical seven, well, I can add these two because these these both these expressions here have a radical seven. It's very much, matter of fact, it's almost exactly like like terms in algebra. So what we're going to do here is add the numbers in front of the square roots of 7. So this is going to be 8 square root of 7. So you can kind of think of uh, this in terms of when you're adding or you want to add or subtract square roots or radicals. You have to look at these things right here, the radicals, and they have to be exactly the same, very much like or exactly like uh, adding 
um, square or adding like terms, excuse me, in algebra. So if I have 3x and 11x, I can add these. This is 14x because we have an x here and x here. But if I had an x squared right here, and now this is 11x, well, these are not like terms, so I cannot add the coefficients. So that's what you want to be looking for is saying, okay, well, I can't, uh, you know, you might be saying, well, I can't add these right here because this is a 20 and this is a 5. So, well, you know, I might as well just skip this part. There's no hope in adding these two radical expressions. Well, not so quick because what we need to do here is simplify, fully simplify any radicals. So what we got to do is focus in on this square root of 20. Again, a lot of multiple skills involved here. And let's go ahead and simplify this square root of 20. Now, again, this is something that hopefully you learn. And if you haven't learned how to do this, the idea is to uh, look for uh, what we call perfect square factors. Let me kind of, you can kind of see I have the word here, but let me kind of break this out a little bit further. So the square root of 20, we can break up uh, this expression, or we can write this expression by breaking up this number into factors. So I can be like, well, the square root of 20 is the same thing as the square root of uh, 2 times 10. And these are factors of 20, but uh, those factors are not that exciting. What I'm looking for is something called perfect square factors. Things like um, these numbers right here, 4, 9, 16, 25, etc. I'm looking to see if a number underneath the square root has any of these numbers as factors. Now, of course, 20 we can write as a square root of 4 times 5. Now, I want these type of numbers, these perfect squares, because I could take the square root of these numbers without the aid of a calculator and look right there. The square root of 4 is 2. So that is going to be really uh, the, the secret to simplifying uh, square roots of radicals is seeing if you can detect any perfect square uh, radical or perfect square factors, excuse me. But we're not done yet because there's another uh, principle and you can kind of see it in action right here. So the square root of 20 is equal to the square root of four times five, okay? But this big radical, this big square root over these two numbers, four and five, we can break this up into their own individual square roots. So this is the same thing as the square root of four times the square root of five. Now this really is the secret because uh, the square root of four is two. So two times the square root of five is the same thing as the square root of 20. So when you look at a square root of radical, you always have to ask yourself, is this thing fully simplified? If, it is, if it's not, you need to fully simplify because when we do this, you'll see there's an opportunity to actually add these two expressions. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue forward. So here we have three times the square root of four times five, which of course is the same thing as a three times the square root of 20. Now I could break up this square root of four times five into their own individual square roots. And now I have three times the square root of four. The square root of four, of course, is two. And we're only talking about the principal square root, the positive version of that. So three times the square root of four is the same thing as three times two. And of course, that's going to be in front of this square root of five. And this is all multiplication here. So three times two is six. And we have six square root of five. And this seven square root of five, we're just going to carry this down. And we are trying to add these two square roots. And we can because we now are dealing with two square roots of five. So to add them, we're simply going to add the numbers in front of the square roots of five. So six and seven is 13. So all this is equal to 13 square root of five. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense. Again, you know what I'm doing here is just reviewing the skills and you know necessary to solve this problem. This isn't uh, uh, kind of um, you know a substitute for a complete full lesson. Matter of fact, I'll just tell you right now, if you are studying this in some sort of math course and you want my best full instruction on this, a couple of quick suggestions. One, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out. But the best uh, suggestion I have for you is to check out like my full Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 course. You can find links to those in, uh, in the description below. Okay, so here we focused in on the numerator. And we have 3 square root of 20 plus uh, 7 square root of 5. We did all this work, and it all came out to be equal to 13 square root of 5. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, focus our attention on the denominator. So now we have the square root of 2 times the square root of 3. So this operation is addition. This operation right here is multiplication. So how do we multiply square roots and radicals? Well, this is entirely different than adding and subtracting. When we multiply 
square roots and radicals, all we have to do is basically, first of all, we can't do this, all right? We can't have the square root of seven, or sorry, the cube root of seven, and, and multiply that by the square root of seven. Okay, you cannot do that, all right? Now, if I have the square root of seven, and I want to multiply it by the, by the square root of seven, I can do that because both of these are square roots. This is a cube root. You can't multiply a cube root by a square root. So the roots have to be the same. So in other words, if I have the fifth root of seven, I can multiply that by the fifth root of three. And the way I do that is effectively what I'm doing right here because I have the square root of two times the square root of three. Uh, these again are like two factors of one number, which would be six. So I can write um, this under one big square root. So this is equal to the square root of two times three. Okay, it's basically the reverse of what we were doing um, in the previous step. So the square root of two times three is equal to, of course, the square root of six. So that's the main idea here, is that when you're multiplying square roots and radicals, if they have the same uh, uh, root, then you can actually multiply. All right, so hopefully all this stuff makes sense. Now, if you uh, got to this part of the problem, and he says, okay, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I did all this work. Here is my answer. Well, I would have to give you maybe like a 7 out of 10. Now, a lot of you might be saying, what are you talking about, 7 out of 10? I did everything right. Uh, we added those expressions in the uh, numerator, and I did all this multiplication right here. Well, this is not right. Okay, so <laughs> another uh, step that we have to address. Uh, we cannot leave the problem like this. And, of course, I'll explain this in just one second. But first... I'm going to ask you to quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wouldn't stop this lovely math video if it wasn't that important for me to ask for your support. I need to continue to uh, grow my channel. Uh, I've been on YouTube for well over 10 years, have a couple thousand plus videos. But, but uh, my you know passion to do these videos you know pretty much daily is to reach as many people as I can. Now, I do have a pretty good reach, and I'm definitely grateful for that, but uh, there is a lot more people that I can be helping, and the only way I can reach those people is if uh, the YouTube algorithm says, hey, you know what? People don't really mind listening to this guy too much, although he rambles from time to time. You know what? I'll help him out. So all you have to do is hit that subscribe button, and if you're going to do that, you might as well hit that notification button as well so you can get my latest videos. Okay, so let's go uh, back to this problem, and what is the issue? Well, we have a square root in the denominator, but not any square root. So if I have 13 square root of 5, okay, so here is our numerator, and I have the square root of 25 in uh, the denominator, uh, this is uh, not a problem. Now, why is this not a problem? And this is because the square root of 25 is equal to 5, okay? That is a lovely number that we can simplify. It's not an irrational number. And this number right here is what we call an irrational number. If you go into the, your calculator and take the square root of 6, you're going to get a decimal, okay, that doesn't uh, terminate and it doesn't repeat, okay? It's going to go on and on in infinity. So you can never divide anything by a number that doesn't really kind of uh, make sense in terms of, you know, an actual value, okay? We can't really write out this entire value because you're dealing with a number, uh, non-terminating, non-repeating decimal. So this is an issue, and this is a big deal when you study square roots and radicals. So we have to address it, okay? We cannot um, leave an irrational number in the denominator. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to do this right down here, okay? This is called rationalizing the denominator. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this entire thing and we're going to multiply it by, well, let me get my right uh, pin here, we're going to multiply this entire thing by 1. Okay, now if I take any number, let's say 12, and I multiply it by 1, uh, what's the answer? It's just 12. If I take x and I multiply it by 1, what's the answer? It's just x. This is what we call the multiplicative uh, identity. But here, we're going to be a little bit um, uh, kind of, uh, you know, resourceful, and we're going to be using an interesting 1. Okay, we're going to use this one right here. Okay, so the square root of 6 divided by the square root of 6 is what? Well, anything divided by itself is 1. So we're going to multiply this entire thing by 1, but not this one. We're going to multiply it by this one. Okay, this is the way I kind of like to teach this. Now, a lot of um, students will be like, okay, whatever this is down here, I'm going to multiply 
both the numerator and denominator by this, and that is, of course, the correct step. But really, you know, you have to understand that you're not breaking the problem. We're just multiplying by one. If you can kind of recognize that, then uh, this will all make sense. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the multiplication. Hopefully, you remember now how to multiply because I just covered how to do that. But let's go ahead and see the result of doing this. So the square root of 6 times the square root of 6 is the square root of 36 now, which, of course, is 6. That is now in our denominator. And now I have 13 times the square root of 5 times the square root of 6. So I can just put this under 13 or put this as 13 times the square root of 5 times 6, which, of course, is 30. Now, when I'm looking at this square root of 30, I need to ask myself, are there any um, perfect square factors in 30? Now, this is prime. If I look at these numbers here, I have 5, the square root of 5, and then the here I have the square root of 6, which is, of course, 2 times 3. So can I come up with any perfect square factors, i.e. 4, 9, uh, 16, 25 from these numbers? Nope. So this is all done. Okay. In other words, if we had a situation right here, like this is this was the square root of, of uh, 40, this I can write as the square root of 4 times 10. And of course, the square root of 4, I can break this out as square root of 4 times the square root of 10 because it's uh, 4 is a perfect square factor. So, you know, these problems, you know, you really have to be methodical and always be evaluating, hey, is there any more to do? And that's why I say a lot of people get these problems wrong because they do a lot of good work, but they stop, you know, at a point where, you know, they're just not done. So working with square roots and radicals, you know, does require focus, but this stuff is not difficult. It just requires great instruction and practice, practice, practice. So if you're not willing to practice, you know, math, math is like any other skill. You're not going to get better at it unless you do a bunch of practice prompts. Now, if you're learning this, here is the way you want to approach, you know, uh, the practice problems that you do. And hopefully if you're actually a teacher in a classroom that your, you know, your teacher is issue, uh, giving you a good homework assignments, I'm pretty sure they are. But basically, you want to start off with easy, basic problems, okay? Then you want to get to more you know, medium-level problems and then more advanced-level problems. Now, you yourself may not know, you know, what problems to choose. If you're just trying to do independent practice, that's why it's good to kind of, you know, take a full course or use a kind of a, a program like my program, you know, if you really want to learn this stuff. But hopefully, this little video helps you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.